Mike, thanks for tuning back in. Uh, weird one today, not something I would typically do. Um, I love vintage baseball cards and vintage basketball cards. This one's about vintage trading cards, and I, I'm not into Nintendo vintage trading cards at all, but uh, it, it's this was a story that really, really spoke to me because it's happened to me with old, old tops baseball cards um, or maybe they were upper deck, uh, and I just love opening vintage cards. And the, the ultimate dilemma for this person, which we'll get into all of that, was do I open these 70-year-old cards or not? And you'll see what happened. Uh, it's honestly, it's devastating, but uh, I'm not becoming a trading card channel. I'm still mostly baseball, some basketball cards. I was just, I, this, so Google News or whatever, the, the algorithm for Google, um, it knows me so well. And it fed me this article yesterday from Kotaku. I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, so uh, Before Mario is the name of a person. Well, his name is Eric Voskule, I think it might be pronounced. And he goes by Before Mario on Twitter and his website is beforemario.com. So anyway, he has collected vintage Nintendo things from the, uh, he says the 60s through the 80s, through the early 80s, pre-Mario, before Mario.com, uh, for 20 years and had never seen these cards. So before Mario came along, actually Nintendo was founded in 1889. It's a 133-year-old company. I, I found out about Nintendo's history as a trading card company back in like the mid-90s. I thought Nintendo was new, 10 years old, and found out that they actually did trading cards for decades, almost a century, actually, um, exclusively, almost. And it blew my mind as a, you know, 15-year-old Mike that they were all trading cards until they started building video games and, and gaming consoles. So, 1889, uh, and before they came out with Donkey Kong in 1981, and Super Mario, and then, of course, Super Mario Bros. in 85, they did trading cards. And in the 1950s, Kyoto in Japan, which at one point, I'm not sure when, Kyoto was the capital of Japan. Um, the Kyoto or Japanese government wanted to promote tourism for Kyoto. And they wanted to promote it to English-speaking foreigners. So they, um, they contracted with Nintendo to create a trading card set that would promote tourism. And you know, every trading card just like, uh, I guess, playing cards, would have a picture of something that Kyoto was known for. So uh, these were made in the 1950s. This collector had never seen them before. And he had been searching and, and collecting vintage Nintendo things for 20 years. So it's pretty shocking. Imagine somebody like Mike Moynihan of Baseball Collector all of a sudden discovering a set of cards he's never heard of before and has never been documented, has never been graded by PSA. It's pretty mind boggling to me that this expert collector had never heard of these Kyoto playing cards, or trading cards. I guess, I don't know if they're tra trading cards or playing cards. They're playing cards. So Eric, before Mario, found two boxes of them I can't figure out where he found them, where he obtained them. For me, that's the best part of the story. I'm, I'm a storyteller. I love the how and the where. How did how did he get them? And maybe I'll tweet at him and I'll update this. Uh, I'll update this story later on if I can find out the story behind obtaining these packs. Um, so he found these two boxes or obtained them. They were dusty but in really good condition. The each box has a sample card glued to them, kind of giving them an idea of what to expect inside. And that sample card, I think, gave him that, ooh, this would be really awesome to open these. Um, one of the boxes was missing the sample card, but you could see it had been glued to it and at some point had fallen off or been removed somehow. So he had this, this uh, dilemma, this quandary, this conundrum. Do I open these or not? And for me, the easy answer historically has been yes. I want to open packs of cards. I love packs of cards. I want that big win. I want to see what's in there. I love the history behind this stuff. Um, 
And with baseball cards, you have that temptation to get something graded and then maybe have something that's worth a lot of money, something that you can put up on your wall. With these, Eric was tempted by curiosity and um, admiring the cards and documenting them. Really noble pursuits. Much better pursuit than mine, which is adding cool things to my collection, maybe finding a card that's worth a lot of money. So the wrapper was glued shut. It's covered with tax stamps. They had to pay their taxes on these by putting tax stamps on them. This one had two stamps, uh, totaling 60 yen, I guess. So at this point, he's kind of thinking, do I open these? Do I not open them? But he's thinking there's got to be you know, beautiful photos of Kyoto in there. Uh, he knows that the value is in keeping them sealed. There's no value possibly in opening them. Could, the value could go completely to zero by opening them. And if he intends to ever sell them or anything like that, the value is in keeping them sealed. Did open them and they were completely fused together. They've been hot and humid, stored in probably hot and humid conditions for 70 years. Uh, pretty devastating, completely fused. Some people gave him some ideas to like hot box them. Uh, I don't know, that sounds like an urban dictionary word. I don't know if that's the right thing. Um, put them in the freezer or put them in humidity. Uh, they were 100% paper, so this came, this predated when cards were made of plastic and chrome and all that stuff. They were 100% paper, uh, and they were just a solid brick of paper. Not fixable, not able to... He, he still open to ideas, but the ideas that people have come up with, the traditional ways of debricking cards, he says have, have proven unworthy of debricking these. So I'm curious what your thoughts are. What would you do if you found a vintage set of cards that you have been, you're, you're an expert in this field and nobody's ever seen these before. There's no documentation of these cards before. Do you open them or do you sell them? Do you hang on to them and keep them as a, a keepsake, a, like the, the hallmark of your collection to show that you have these packs so let's say you found a 1955 pack of a set that nobody's ever heard of before. And you can tell what it is. It's some obscure top set that nobody's ever seen. I know it's impossible to think of this, but Eric Voskul probably thought this was impossible too. Um, what would you do with it? Throw it in comments, let me know. If you're new here, click that subscribe button. I promise you it's not gonna be Nintendo trading cards, or really any trading cards. I don't know anything about Pokemon or Magic the Gathering. Uh, I don't even know what others are out there. Uh, not that they're bad. They're just not something I was ever into. My son got into them. But yeah, I'm really curious about this stuff. Let me know in comments what you think. Anyway, thanks very much for watching.